Hi, my name is Adam Perone, and I'm from the Kiowa and Mohawk tribes. I'd like to extend my gratitude to the Ute Tribal Nation, the traditional caretakers of the land on which the Sundance Film Festival takes place every year, and to all Indigenous people from where you're joining us from. Welcome and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Sundance Film Festival 2021. My name is Dilsey Barrera. I am a programmer for the festival and it's my honor to introduce today's Cinema Cafe presented by Audible. This Cinema Cafe is one of my favorite traditions of the festival. It's called Fresh Faces because we're highlighting the performances of new exciting voices. Our special guests today are Tyson Brown, star of First State, Patty Harrison, star of Together Together, and Amelia Jones, star of CODA. On behalf of the entire Sundance team, I would like to thank Tyson, Patty, and Amelia for joining us today. Please make sure to catch their movies during the festival. And of course, I would like to take the time to thank our dear friend, Monica Castillo, for moderating today's conversation. Monica is the arts and culture reporter at Colorado Public Radio, her work has been featured by NPR, The New York Times, The Washington Post, The LA Times, NBC News, RogerEbert.com, Remescla, and many others. We're so thankful to have her join us today. Please do not forget, we have many other conversations taking place here throughout the festival and beyond. So I encourage you to check out the schedule on our website in the Sundance Official Talks and Events Program. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy. And now I will hand it over to Monica. Hello and welcome to Cinema Cafe at Sundance Film Festival 2021. I am your host, Monica Castillo. I'm the culture reporter for uh, Colorado Public Radio, and I'm very excited to be joined by this lovely panel, uh, and I can't wait to hear about their films, their projects, and their experiences. Uh, so I would love for them each to tell me a bit about your breakout character once you introduce yourselves. Let's start with Amelia. Hi, I'm Amelia, and uh, I play Ruby in CODA, and uh, Coda has been the biggest role that I've done so far. It was a super exciting um, role to play and I loved it. And Patty? Um, my name is Patty. Um, I play Anna in Together Together. Uh, I would say is, is the same situation. It was the kind of the most involved, uh, the most amount of work I've ever, <laughs> I've ever done on uh, on a single shoot. And I think, you know, Anna is, is not too far, uh, off from me. She feels like a very real grounded person. I think she's someone that I would, I would really like hanging out with, um, if she were real, but she's not real. She's a fictional character and she'll never be alive, um, outside of the screen. And, um, so I go to bed with that every night and I wake up screaming. I'm going to have to ask you more about that in a moment, uh, but I want to hear first from Tyson. Hey, I'm Tyson. Uh, I play Mike in First Date. He's basically this like low self-esteem kid who doesn't really know himself or really kind of care about himself in a sense. But then just throughout the movie, throughout the journey, he just kind of becomes like a man in a way or like more confident in, in himself and things like that. So it was pretty pretty fun project. I learned about, a lot about myself and just about other people. So pretty sweet. Wonderful. And now one of the big things now, now that you've had like this huge feature role um, is how you develop those characters over time. There's, you know, your first impression when you read the script and then there's a bit of a journey as you flesh them out, um, whether that's through acting or, you know, thinking about it even before you get onto set. So I want to hear from each of you how you develop that character. And let's start with Patty. Um, I think it was a lot of, a lot of hanging out with, Nicole Beckwith, uh, who wrote and directed it. I sometimes, I, I think sometimes is being generous, but I sometimes have a hard time gauging like the tone 
uh, when I'm reading and uh, a, a script and um, I, I'm a comedian and it was my first like big acting role that was a lot more grounded and I would even consider it, you know, the, on the dramedy crust, cusp, the dramedy crusp. Um, I'm going to start baby talking you all for the west of the end of you. I'm going to start talking to you like a baby. Um, no, I, it was just like a lot more, um, Originally, when I was approached about it, I just assumed it was going to be in it, a hard in the paint comedy because they were like Ed Helms is like attached and and I read it and the script is really funny. There's a lot of like really just like razor sharp uh, writing and Nicole's sense of humor is so is so smart and so I think I kind of saw it. I like overshot that and then it took a lot of conversations and spending time with her over like a little cheese board uh, with crackers and grapes and <laughs> me like spiraling out um, <laughs> because I, I uh, you know, I just get in my own head about that stuff. So definitely, you know, working it out with her and Ed to figure out like how this character just relates to the everyone else in the world and what Nicole's intentions were when she wrote the character. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I, I, I will come back to the tone in a little bit because each of the projects are so different in tone. So I would love to hear a little bit more about that process. Um, but I want to first hear from Tyson about that character development. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So for me, I always take like a childlike approach to anything I kind of take on. Because as a kid, you just were you lost in your own imagination, trying to figure out like, oh, I want to be this character today and like do this world. So I kind of took that approach to it, and just like I read the script and whatever kind of came out of me came out of me. Um, I don't like to really force anything. Like it's all in the reading for me. Like reading other characters' uh, lines, reading the setting, and just talking to the director, and then just just kind of spits out myself, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's not really, I guess I don't have like a complicated answer for it. It's just a simple, read it, whatever I feel that character should be like, and just go from there. I'm just really, I like to use my own creativity first and then kind of go out and act the director for like, hey, what do you want the character to be like and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's great. So you bring in a lot of uh, ideas and your own interpretations even before uh, you get onto set. Um, I'd also like to hear from Amelia about that process. Um, well, I mean, I was really moved by the script and um, Ruby was a real challenge to me because I didn't know any sign language um, before I shot Coda. And uh, I think like 40, 50% of the movies in sign language. So I kind of, I worked, I think, nine months um, prior to shooting, learning sign language, um, having singing lessons. I'd never had a singing lesson before. Um, and then when I got there, I worked with ASL directors and coaches, and uh, I worked with Marley, Matlin, who plays my mom, and Troy Kotzer and Daniel, and uh, they really helped me with my sign language, and we would improvise and bond and I also learned how to fish, uh, how to work a trawler boat. So there was a lot to prepare for, for the script. Um, and then Sean, he the director, and I worked together um, on Ruby's character and how she feels and what it's like to be a CODA. And CODA stands for Child of Deaf Adults. Um, and we talked to CODAs about their experiences and some of the interpreters on our film were CODAs, which was really helpful. So I did a lot to prepare, um, but Sean was so great. Uh, we, we kind of went through the journey together because she was also learning sign language and it was something completely new and different for both of us. It was a real challenge, but that's why I wanted to do this project so much because I like something that educates me and challenges me as an actress. Yeah, wow, that is quite a bit of research. Nine, nine months, you said? Yeah, nine months. And then when we wrapped the film, Sean and I kind of looked at each other and we were like, what are we going to do with our lives now? 
like for like nine months, 10 months, we've just been signing, signing and Coda has been consuming our worlds. And then now it was just all over, but I'm, I'm still learning sign language. I completely fell in love with their beautiful language. Yeah. So I loved it. I loved learning it. Oh, that's awesome. And now I want to jump all the way back to when did you first find out about these projects uh, and what about them stood out to you and said that and kind of uh, got you to sign on. So I want to start with Tyson this time around. Okay. Um, found out about the project in the early part of 2018. And what kind of got me to sign on was just I saw it as a challenge because um, it's like the first biggest project I got ever. And so I was just like, this is different. And this is like the step in the direction I want to go. And I just kind of accepted it. Um, I never did like a lead road or anything like that. And I just thought it would be a really fun experience, um, especially with the director's overview of everything and just talking to him a lot. And he just made the whole experience like this kind of uh, family essence vibe versus just the, we're just all here to work. So just having that kind of essence there really just allowed me to feel comfortable and excited to do the project. So yeah, shout out to Manuel. Manuel Crosby is great. Awesome. And Patty? I think originally when i got sent the script i um it was like very i think in what tyson was saying it was very exciting at the idea of like getting kind of this opportunity to do something that would would be like a lot more challenging and a lot more work when i first started reading the script i had a lot of um I kind of had a lot of fears about tropes or like where it was going in terms of, uh, you know, expectations about sort of like rom com movies and things. And uh, there was this little bit as I started to read the script, the sense of dread about like, oh, I don't, I, I hope that, like this doesn't turn into what I think it's going to be. And it really subverted like a lot of my expectations in this way that was super exciting. And it definitely was different than anything I've ever like, definitely anything I've worked on before, but anything I ever really thought I'd get to do. So it just felt like something completely different and uh, yeah, an opportunity to kind of stretch myself outside of my comfort zone. And it felt really cool that Nicole um was excited about me for it and so um it just felt like a whole new sort of experience great and amelia uh yeah i read the script for coda and i thought sean had done such an incredible job it was like nothing i'd ever read before there were highs there were lows um but you know it was so uplifting and i knew that it would be a real challenge for me and it would be out of my comfort zone so i really I jumped at the chance to audition and tape. And I also loved that um, Sean, when we Skyped before I found out that I got the part, said that she was going to cast deaf actors in the deaf roles. So that was a major thing for me that really drew me to the project, even more than reading the script and knowing more about the character. We kind of touched on tone a little bit earlier on, but I want to revisit that because each of the movies so far does this really delicate balance between, you know, the dramatic and the super comedic, you know, um, you, as an actor, how do you kind of navigate playing, you know, the sort of straightforward dramatic scenes and then the little bit ones that are uh, hilarious and cringeworthy potentially. Um, there's many of those moments in uh, Patty's film for sure. And then Amelia, you have like this really deeply felt family story, but also, you know, a girl who's trying to get through high school and really annoyed by the process and her classmates who <laughs> can be mean at times. And uh, in Tyson's film, uh, it's all these zany things that happen to this poor character. <laughs> and he's just trying to survive and do the most basic thing, just go out on a date. <laughs> so I'd like to hear from each of you about hitting those, you know, different sort of emotional points in the story? I, I, uh, I throw up. I, um, I 
feel like it was uh it was so interesting it was such an interesting like uh, I don't know if I don't know if I want to use the word ecosystem, but I'm going to use it um, <laughs> for for like each scene because I think like overall a lot of the cast are really really like insanely funny comedians, like people that I really admire and some of my like really good friends, and uh, and the movie has its moments where it definitely there's comedic relief and there's you know um hard in the paint jokes but it definitely like my character isn't really the one laying into that and when we were shooting there were like you know opportunities to ad lib and stuff and i came i came like two days out of shooting this like comedy tv show that i was working on where we were allowed to ad lib a lot and it, the humor was a lot more absurd so i was coming into this movie like ad libbing a lot of like really sexually graphic uh <laughs> like a really heavy language a lot of like just like trash juice spewing out of my mouth like and nicole did an amazing job of being like that's not this movie <laughs> let's like your let's bring it down a little bit the movie definitely has like uh a lot of playful moments but it uh it was a process for me to kind of like settle into the tone and understand that like I wasn't there to be making a million jokes or anything like that I had like a character who was like very emotionally at odds with like what was happening and it was it was like a way more delicate story than you know the mindset i had like just come out of i guess so um it was so cool it was really cool to see someone like ed who like i've seen in a million kind of slapstick comedies uh be really really like timid and really gentle in in a sustained way like it's sustained it's not like you know to serve up some huge big hammy laugh it's like i think there's a good balance of that with like the other kind of characters that pop in um who do have like i think more jokey parts great and amelia well code is kind of really about that moment in life when you have to separate from the people you love and figure out who you are outside of your childhood identity. So any kind of moment in the film, which is funny and hilarious, it's, it kind of just happened. We didn't force it. You know, if something was funny, we laughed on screen. We kind of were the characters and we all got on like a family and, you know, life can be both really funny and, and, uh, it could also be really tough and heartbreaking. So we kind of didn't force any um, like emotions or feelings, uh, everything that happened on screen really did happen. There were so many scenes with Troy, Troy Kotzo plays uh, Frank Rossi, my dad in the film. He was probably one of the funniest people I have ever met and he never tried to be funny. And because we did a lot of improvisation on screen, sometimes I wouldn't know what he was going to say. And so it would just be hilarious and Sean was like, if he's if he's making you laugh laugh like so it was great because we had this freedom and it meant that i could just really kind of be the character and i never knew what was going to happen awesome and tyson uh thinking back after uh amelia i think the same thing it was just like if it happened it happened um there was no forcing of an experience there that makes it really awkward <laughs> Other than that, um, me and um, Shelby, the, the other co-star in the film, we would have just kind of like inside jokes about our characters and stuff like that. And so like when things would happen on set, when we're shooting, it just like, we'll think of like the inside joke and it just kind of be funny of us actually playing the characters or whatever we're saying in the certain scene. So, yeah. I love what Amelia said about her experience with working with some of the other actors in the cast. Um, do any of you also have similar 
favorite experiences uh, from working on your projects? And let's start with Tyson. Yes. <laughs> My uh, friend Josh, who's also in the movie, he's just naturally funny. And so even if he wasn't shooting that day, he'll just be on set and uh, just trying to like focus sometimes is hard, but like not in a bad way, because like he'll do something crazy while we're shooting and I'm just like trying not to laugh <laughs> during like a serious take or something like that. But just having Josh around just made everything just kind of light and funny and really stress free. So I really like that. <laughs> it was a great time. And uh, yeah, it just helped me kind of dive deeper into certain parts of my character and bringing out uh, this a getting way of the getting rid of the shyness that I have for playing certain parts. And like, he would just like let me get really loose and just just go after it. So yeah. Awesome. And Patty? Um, I would say that there were, there were some days where, you know, we were shooting scenes with some of the characters that are more comedic that would come in and, um, like Julio Torres or Anna Conkle or, uh, Joe Firestone or Greta Teitelman, like these are all like really funny comedians that are very fun to be around. So like, it was nice because a lot of the stuff that I was shooting with Ed, I think was like more emotionally challenging and like uncomfortable at times. And so to have those days where on set where they would be there and we could like laugh a lot and it was like a familiar face to be around was really nice. There was one specific scene with like the birthing class with Anna Conkle where she kept doing, there's a part where she does a cleansing breath to open, to start this like class. And she lets out this really deep one like note over and over again. And it was like, in it was just making me cry. Like I, la I was laughing so hard every time she would do it. And there were a lot of moments like that. There was like a moment um, where she, <laughs> another moment where she had to push a baby doll through a, a fake uh, pelvis. And it, like the baby, the doll's like arm popped off. Or it was like a lot. Those moments were really like, you know, that was like i think uh reinvigorating in a lot of ways it like i think it's good to have like to restore you know a little bit of play in in those situations and it made it easier to go back into i think the stuff that felt heavier that sounds delightful <laughs> uh amelia do you have any other uh, favorite memories from set I mean, so many, I could talk for hours about memories of filming. I mean, it was nice because I had a completely different relationship and um, like I had, a, I had a different relationship when I was at school and with the choir because I didn't have to sign at all. And then when I was with the family, I was constantly signing. So the Rossies would always make me laugh. Like Marley, Daniel and Troy are so funny and we were like a family, we were so close and we immediately bonded. And I was kind of a little bit nervous going into the film because I I knew that the Rossies had to be this tight knit, incredibly close family. And I was worried that with a language barrier, I wouldn't be able to show that connection and form that bond. But the minute we met, we all just gelled and got on really, really, really well. So it was nice because when we were shooting, we were all so close and we'd make each other laugh but i was kind of always working in a way because i you know i wanted to make sure that i could engage and talk and sign to them constantly so then when i was doing scenes with the choir or um with eugenio i didn't have to sign i was kind of just a kid and i could just relax and and joke around so it was nice because i had both relation both relationships with different cast members were completely different um but I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I've honestly, I don't think I've ever felt as close to anyone like on screen as I did to the Rossi family. We were that family and I was so protective over them and we just got on so well. So I was really lucky. We were really lucky with our cast for sure. 
That's awesome. And that's always good to hear uh, that you do, you are able to form that camaraderie with everyone working alongside you. Um, I'm yeah, curious everything if, you see on screen. Everything yeah. you see on screen is exactly how we felt in real life. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you captured that. Um, but that's also a credit to the director, which as the lead, I'm sure you worked very closely with the director. Uh, could you maybe share some of the pieces of advice that they gave you? Um, I'm thinking of uh, how, you know, Patty was given the direction to maybe tone things down a bit more. But um, yeah, I'd like to hear a, a bit more about what those conversations are like. So let's start with Amelia. Well, Sean and I worked really hard together and we were kind of both dropped in the deep end in a way we'd never done a film in a different language. Um, Sean was also learning sign language. I was learning sign language. And it was cool actually, because we'd been working really hard. And I think this was like the first, first week, second week of shooting. Uh, I was on one boat, Sean was on another boat. And she was trying to shout to me some tones or um, uh, things about the scene that she wanted me to know. And I couldn't quite hear her because the engine was so loud and it was so busy. And we kind of stood there for a second and looked at each other and we were like, we're learning sign language. Like, why don't you sign me notes? Why don't we talk in this beautiful language that we're learning? So then from then on, Sean kind of would give me notes in sign language. And um, we just, we, we did everything together. And I absolutely adore Sean. I think she's the most incredible director. Um, and she wrote such a beautiful script. She didn't miss a beat. Um, I really hope I can work with her again. I absolutely adore her. Awesome. And Tyson? Uh, yeah, so working with Manuel was great because and he's, cause I was still new to just being a lead actor and all this other stuff. And he was always just there, like, he could tell if I just wasn't in the right headspace for a certain scene, he would just bring me to the side, like, hey, just imagine if you're in this kind of setting and this is all going on and all these things are happening and then it just let me let me be i like wouldn't even have to respond to him even if he asked me questions about like this thing like what am i feeling it would just let me internalize everything and then i'll get back on set we'll call action and that would be the take to go and so just having that support and just having the flexibility of um improvising on certain scenes he'll he's just like you know the script is just a guideline he's like if you want to add anything do so. He's like, I'll let you know if I don't really like it at all. But that really was never the case, honestly. Um, so just having the freedom to take my character where I wanted to take it was really amazing versus just having like a strict kind of a format of like, no, we need you to do it like that or do this like that. It was all kind of just based on emotion and based on like uh, um, that current scene. If we're just shooting right now, it's based off that current emotion that you're working on versus like what's really in the script in a way. So. That was pretty nice. That's great. And Patty? Um, Nicole Beckwith would fart and blame it on me on set. And everyone thought it would, was me. And that was really hard because I went to HR multiple times. And then she, they would say, no, we know you're the farter. And it was hell to work on that film. And... I'm not supposed to say that because we're in the legal battle. But other than that, I will say that um, it was really fun to like, <laughs> Nicole, Nicole facilitated such a, a like, accessib an accessibility to her that like she would come and like find you like right first thing in the morning and she like wrote people these little like handwritten letters on paper which is psycho she's from like she's from like colonial era uh and uh it it was like i think she did a good job of making people feel uh like safe in a way and i think I don't think that's just like her being nice. I think she really understands how when people feel good, they feel like confident and they feel competent and it makes people do their jobs better. Uh, and I always felt like supported by her. 
and she did she's like such a sensitive and articulate person that when i say that she gives she would give me notes like hey you need to tone it down it was never said in that way it was said in like the nicest like i think she knows i'm a sensitive little worm of a person and uh she just what it felt like you were like hanging out in a way that i think is like good because you were like really loosened up and like everything was shaken out and she did a really good job of making sure that we were really prepared going into it because we had such a tight like i guess turnaround on on filming that um there was i never felt like on my own i guess i never felt like there was a moment where i was like i don't know what to do I'm scared. I felt like she was always there and there was always someone who was like ready to answer my question when they could see it appear on my face before I'd ask it. And that felt like really cool. And I think it made it just like, it was such a relief in a lot of ways, despite the fact that she would fart on set and blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, aside from that, it does sound like it was a supportive <laughs> environment for most of the panelists. <laughs> Um, I would like to ask um, for everyone in the room, have you had the chance to see your completed projects uh, yet? Because I know it's one experience to film it and work on it and maybe there's, you know, takes that get taken out or you're not quite sure which uh, scene they decided to go with. So I'm, I'm curious to hear if anyone's had the chance to see their movie yet. Yes. Awesome. That's yeah. Tell me more, Tyson. What was that feeling like when you finally got to see the finished film? It was weird at first, um, just seeing myself act for a long period of time. So it was kind of mm -hmm. awkward, but then just getting captured in the story all over again, I kind of just like lost that feeling like, oh, did I do good and all this other stuff? I was just really just captured by the story and by the finished project. And it was just great to see like all this hard work that we all put into it like paid off because at that point it paid off for me like just watching the whole film and seeing the whole story um do its thing that was enough for me and then Sundance happened but um uh but yeah it was just really great to see like um the moments on screen but knowing like what happened behind the scenes when you shot that particular scene that was also like really just funny to think about so it was a really good time to watch that that's great either Amelia or Patty yeah, I watched, um, it was interesting watching Coda because originally it was three hours long, so they cut 36 scenes from the movie. So watching the movie for the first time, it was kind of like a different film to what I read on paper. So it was really interesting. I think Sean's done an amazing job with it. Um, yeah, I was happy. I was really happy because Coda was a really hard, hard one for everybody. You know, we were um, fighting against time and, and money and everybody that worked on that film poured their heart and soul into it. So watching it and smiling all the way through and, and my family cried. So I was like, that can only be a good thing. It makes people feel, it makes people, um, I, th I think you go through a journey with the characters while watching it. So, and I think it's something that people need right now. We need a bit of a smile now and then. We need a, a kind of a happy ending-ish. You know, I think you need to laugh and, and and cry a little bit. And I loved it. So I loved watching the film. I think Sean did an amazing job and I was happy for everybody, especially when we got into Sundance. Yeah, that's just a nice bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Patty, have you had the chance to watch Together Together yet? Um, so the, I saw the, I guess the final, the picture lock, not, maybe not the, I don't know the language for it. Basically it had, the only thing that was to be changed was that there was, um, temp music in it. So I didn't get to hear, I didn't get to see the version that has the, uh, the score by Alex Somers in it, um, which is like the final version. So I watched uh i watched the movie it just has like different music in it um so so no <laughs> so yes and no right it's it's almost there <laughs> yeah 
yeah but uh from what was described to me they were like the movie's not changing other than the music from this point and i was like okay great uh i don't know it was it, yourself on it was horrifying it was like uh yeah i don't know i have a hard time uh i have i, I have a lot of stuff uh i think you know everyone has their neuroses so uh i guess i've never seen you know nicole likes to go in real real close <laughs> Uh, and, uh, that really pissed me off, uh, a couple of times. No, I just, like, I was, like, I remember when we were shooting it, I was, like, and the, per just personally, I have, like, body dysmorphia stuff, and so it's been a challenge to, like, figure out if I want to, like, be on a, in a career field where I'm, like, on camera or whatever, and, uh, when we were shooting, I remember in my head, I was like, don't worry about like trying to look good or like look pretty, like let your face do what it does naturally. When you're like upset, let, let it like wrinkle, let everything be like really like stretched and, uh, you know, be as kind of malleable as it naturally would and not try and like do like a pretty cry or something. Um, mm -hmm. and then when I watched the movie, I was like, why the f didn't I do the pretty cry? Why did I <laughs> let my face do that? <laughs> it's like, why did I, why didn't I, what? I wish I would have done the whole movie. Just like, <laughs> like, oh my God, like just tape, visible tape on my face. <laughs> um, no, it was, it was like, it's a beautiful movie to watch and it is like deeply emotional for me to watch. And in you know multiple ways i think when people watch it like amelia said it's like a really it's a, i feel i'm so proud of it it's like a feel good nice to, like a tonally like rewarding sweet movie there's a lot of love in in it and a mercy to the way the characters are written that's like a great movie to be watching right now i think and uh so after I, you know, put aside my personal stuff, <laughs> it was like, you know, really just like, and for lack of a better term, is a heartwarming watch. And that's my period. Well, <laughs> in addition to the advice to always do the pretty cry take, uh, what other bits of knowledge would you pass on to other acting students or other actors who are looking to make their Sundance debut. Uh, what have you learned from this project that you would like to share with the class? And I'll start with Tyson. Have fun. That's like, you just gotta have fun. Like that's why I got to acting. You're, I'm, I feel like I'm just stretching my childhood experience across my entire adulthood experience. I'm just trying to have a good time while I'm still alive. and. Um, other than the having fun, yes, there's a little bit of seriousness that's involved. And um, if you need help, don't be scared to ask around, ask the director, ask other co-stars who may be all set with you. Um, but yeah, just don't be nervous or try not to be nervous. I mean, we all get nervous, but other than that, just relax and just try to have fun and just kind of stem from moments from your own life experience and put it into your character that you're uh, playing at the time. Yeah. People stop awesome. or just watch people, watch people. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good advice. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Amelia. I feel just learn from people that you work with, learn. I'm constantly learning from whether or not it's watching someone on TV or um, working with someone on a project. I also think just don't shy away from a challenge because I on Coda I learned, um, I learned that I really like I really, really, really had a work ethic and resilience. And I think until you challenge yourself, you don't realize how much you can take as a person. And Sean really, really challenged me, which is why I loved her. Cause I, I don't get offended. Um, I don't need to be complimented. Like I really like someone that tells me straight. And so I learned a lot working with her, but um, yeah, I think 
just, yeah, kind of what Ty said, have fun, um, but also just keep learning from, from everyone and, and everything you watch. That's great advice. Patty? Um, I would say that if, uh, I, I think, you know, be in close contact with your SAG rep, if the director or whoever who's above you starts farting and blaming it on you, I just think it's like, <laughs> you, you have to be in close, constant contact with your SAG rep because then your SAG rep's going to start farting and blaming it on you. And then when you get in that situation, it gets really hard to advocate for yourself. Um, I think <laughs> <Totally that. correct. laughs> I think that uh, I my answer is truly just like Amelia and Tyson's like together. It's like, I think I was really scared to do this movie, but I knew from meeting with like Nicole and Ed in advance that I liked them both a lot and already had like a lot of fun just like talking to them. And it felt like a scary challenge that I think the challenge of it uh, and the risk of doing something outside of your comfort zone when it pays off is like astronomically better than if you would have stayed in your comfort zone and had fun. Like you can have fun in the way that you're used to, or you can really like expand your little brain while you're, you know, here on earth. So I felt really grateful that there were like a million times I think where I was like, I don't think I'm right for this actually. Like, I don't know if this is like for me or if I could do something like that. And, uh, it just really taking, taking it like one step at a time and letting myself have fun with it. And I think, you know, not taking it too seriously, I think letting yourself relax and what, but that's hard. That's not like, it's not like every work situation you'll be in is going to be a situation where everyone's super nice and everyone's like, chill and wants you to succeed there are work environments where there's stressful people to work with and that makes it harder but i think like you get through it in my experience it feels like everything goes by in like a flash it's like you feel like oh i've been working for weeks on this thing and then it's over and then you miss it and it's yeah i would say just have fun be in the moment and challenge yourself <laughs> also I think you, you get more no like never give up because you get a lot more no's than you do yeses for projects um and just because you're hearing no after no after no doesn't mean that the one for you is around the corner I mean that's for, I'm speaking from experience anyway but I think never give up is important for people that want to um start acting or want this to be what they do from now on and, and to also add to that, uh, just with character development, I would just kind of say, um, do what you feel is right. You know, um, when you have an audition, all you're given is just the sides and maybe the script. You're not like sitting there talking to with the director, like, okay, what is your whole vision for the project versus just like you read the character and you interpret, interpret it your own self by yourself and just kind of go from there and not try to stress on like, is this what they want? Or like, should it be like this? It's just, it's all up to you. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing that. This will be my last question. Um, but this is a Sundance unlike any other in Sundance history. I'm curious to hear from each of you. What are you looking forward to in this year's edition? We'll start with Amelia. That's a really good question. I want to hear your answers first to help me. <laughs> Because I'm not, there's like every, like there's so many, I like everything. All right, let's hear from Patty. Um, well, what's really cool is that I don't actually have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm excited to see, like, I've, I've never, ever, I've never been to Sundance. I don't really know how it works. I'm like, this has been kind of like, they're explaining it to me now and I'm like, you're gonna get a link and you're and there's other there's links to other movies too. And I can watch them between this amount of time. So I'm haven't sat down to figure that all out yet. 
But when I do, I swear I'm going to have so many things that I want to see. You're going to go crazy, Monica, when you find out just how many things I'm going to want to see. Um, I, of course, you know, I want to see Tyson and Amelia's movies. I want to see like... Yeah, I was going to say it, it together, feels- together and first day, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I just, yeah, to be like completely honest, I have been like in a glazed over stupor, like truly getting high and just decompressing over the holiday season. So this is now me picking back up into it. So I'm just excited to like sit down and have my moment where I scan through everything and see what's up. That counts. Tyson? I'm just excited to see everyone else's projects. I I literally might watch every single film. That's just how I am. <laughs> um, so I'll probably be on my laptop for an entire 24 hours. Other than that, I'm going to the drive-in that's in San Francisco because I think there's like a showing out there. So I'm going to that. So that's going to be fun. I haven't been to a drive-in since I was like in high school or something like that. But yeah, I love drive-ins. The vibes are great. So I'm just really excited see all the other projects and see what happens after Sundance. Right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Amelia, any answer on what you're looking forward to? Patty's film and Tyson's film for sure. Um, yeah, I'm just looking. I, I, I did a Venice Film Festival when I was younger and uh, when I was 14. So I didn't, you know, I was excited to be there, but I didn't kind of watch all the films or anything. So I'm excited for Sundance. Um, it's my first time. So I'm definitely going to embrace the film festival and watch as much as I can. Well, it's a good thing now we can just all stream it from home. Uh, I want to know it's everyone so good. That's the the <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you can catch Amelia Jones in CODA, you can catch Patty Harrison in Together Together, and you can catch Tyson Brown in First Date. Thank you so much for joining me and in sharing your experiences. I hope and wish you all enjoy your sun dances. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.